this might have been a loss for the Philadelphia 76ers. But you know what this game showed? This team has depth. And they were depleted. And they, you know what? They lost by 18 in that third quarter was a rough one for them. But Joel Embiid continues to show his case that he should be the MVP this year. And he only played 23 minutes because at one point, I think, they really just decided, like, hey, there's no point of you being in there. We're going to lose this game. So let's get the young guys. And I want to talk about two guys that, in my opinion, were great picks, pickups and picks for the Philadelphia 76ers. First off, Tyrese Maxey just looking like a young Rondo at points in the sense that I'm not saying that he plays like Rondo in sense, but his physical like ability, 6'5", with a 6'11 wingspan. And like Rondo, he has that length to disrupt the passing lanes and deflect passes and get it, like intercept balls and also grab rebounds at an impressive rate, which kick off a lot of fast breaks. And he has the speed just to get to one side of the court to the other side of the court in just a blink of a second or a blink of an eye. So I want to hear down below before we start today's video, what do you think of the Philadelphia 76ers and do you think they'll be one of the top teams in the East to continue moving forward even though, you know, they've been struggling with the COVID. Hopefully I don't get demonetized right there. But yeah, so Tyrese Maxey is one of the most impressive rookies in my opinion. He is a man that is just terrorizing teams, especially teams that he feels like not that there's any motive behind it, but he's on a three-game stretch, especially if we talk about his Nuggets game where he looked like one of the most complete rookies coming into this year's class. I think he slid. I personally thought he was going to go to the Orlando Magic at 14, but they chose Cole Anthony, but I had been advocating for him to be going there this whole year, but you know what? Live and let, let, live and let die. So things happen. And Tyrese Maxey has a chance of... I think if they run Tyrese Maxey out there eventually by the playoff series, you can see Tyrese Maxey in the shooting guard position at times getting key minutes next to Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, and the starting lineup, whatever the, their official starting lineup ends up being for the playoffs with Tobias, I assume. And, you know, I wonder if they're going to run at power forward you know, a stretch guy or go with rebound. Because I, the next guy we can go into is Paul Reed, who is, my I think, has the chance of becoming one of the best defenders in the league and being one of the biggest steals in this class. He had three blocks tonight. Paul Reed is a defensive phenom. He's 6'9". He has about, I think, as well, like a 6'10", 6'9", wingspan. And he is a guy who's 21 years old, played to Paul, was one of the best defenders in college every single year practically when he was in college and i think one of the reasons why he didn't get drafted as high as some might have anticipated like myself is due to the small act that he went to DePaul competition but man he might not get you points and bunches like back-to-back -back night he gives you six points and he'll shoot like one three a night but he'll give you rebounds tonight not as many as he did in his first night where last night where he got against the Nuggets where he had seven. But he's a, good night. a guy who's going to give you either a bunch of deflections or steals and at least a block a night. He is so good at timing and having good reaction and being at the right place at the right time, rotating over, knowing how to be just high defensive IQ and just being uh, just a ball hawk. And he has a, the athletic ability to go against one through fives, in my opinion. He can shut down anybody in the league, and I think they have a steal with him, and I really hope that they sign him to a full contract and give him valuable minutes because I think a player like him it cannot be undervalued, and he should be getting – he should be a core, a core part of their rotation by season end, in my opinion, if I was part of this team and needing a player who I think can be – who is showing and can be – a media contributor if properly utilized and with a coach like doc rivers who's really good at putting players in positions to succeed by playing team basketball i think paul reed has a chance of being very successful for the philadelphia 76ers and i, I will keep saying that over and over because i really do have that much faith in this man we could talk about dwight howard for a second you know back-to-back -back nights where he's had three games in a row this is his fourth game in for the season where he's had 
uh, double digit rebounds and Dwight Howard obviously is right now playing not as much minutes as he did for the Los Angeles Lakers last year but he continues to show the ability of being a perimeter a perimeter like a guy who can sometimes step out on the perimeter against small forwards and power forwards if needed not like all the time but like if needed but he continues to be a rim protector and a an energy player off the bench, which is what the Sixers needed in the center. And it's great to have that. Isaiah Joe is the next guy I want to talk about. Isaiah Joe and his, what is now, he's been in a bunch of games, but this is the second game that he's really gotten a bunch of minutes. He's appeared in four, technically six games this year, but he's played two games where he's had over 28 minutes. This game, 28 minutes. Last game, 45 minutes. But showing a willingness to shoot threes. He's 6'4 with... Um, from last what I remember, he has a seven foot wingspan, and he has shown his ability to disrupt passing lanes, deflections, get steals, two steals tonight, one steal last night. He showed his ability to distribute the ball and be a facilitator on the offensive side. But again, the thing that we knew that was going to trans uh, translate to the NBA pretty quickly, and why I thought he could potentially be a first round pick, is that shooting four for seven tonight. The night before, he put, shot three for eleven against the Nuggets. And yeah, he's 100, a measly 165 pounds, which probably has gotten that weight up a little bit since the draft. Uh, not the draft, but, you know, since last season. And I really do believe that this man is an underrated player. So I want to hear down below, what do you guys think of this team's depth? I think they should be a team that a lot of teams should be scared of. Okay. If I was an NBA team, I'd be scared of them. I think they have a lot of potential to do stuff and Matt. Go for a deep play, a playoff run, you know? I I don't know, like, what people would want to see on that. But, like, yeah, that's that's my take on it. What do you guys think? I want to hear down below in the comments. It'd be greatly appreciated. But that's it for me today, guys. I really do hope you guys have a great day. Because, you know, I will. But, yeah, we're just going to milk this for a few more seconds. I'm actually editing the last video we uploaded. So, yeah, if you guys had just watched the Atlanta Hawks video, I'm actually making this video right after the Atlanta Hawks. So, you know, there you go, guys. <laughs> but, I'm going to finish making these tags. If you can hear these little keyboards going off in the background. But, yep, I hope you guys do have a great day because I know I will. Till next time, guys. Puppies out.